Team Taser approved! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of After Hours with Team Taser. I'm your host, Richter Riolo, and I'm joined by my sassy, glassy partner, Tammy Murray, and our new co-host, Team Taser's investigative reporter, Steve Alcorn. Sadly, Nadia Moore is on an indefinite vacation, but we hope to have her back here with us someday. Tonight, our esteemed guest is Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum. He's conducted a ton of laboratory research and fieldwork throughout the Pacific Northwest, as well as in Canada, China, and Russia. The Russia story is kind of funny, actually, but you'll have to get to that in the second part of the interview. Anyways, he has spoken about his findings in numerous interviews, including NPR's Science Friday and Radio West, television appearances, including The Today Show, National Geographic, Discovery, History, Sci-Fi, Animal Planet, and now After Hours with Team Taser. He has given many public and professional presentations and was a featured scientist in Scientific American and the National AAAS webpage. Whatever that is. I don't know. Hey, I'm just an artist. Anyways, perhaps you've seen him on television on History Channel's Monster Quest series or his fantastic documentary that was on the Discovery Channel, Sasquatch, where legend meets science, which is also a book in its second printing. Um, you know, I gotta say, he has been our voice of reason in the Bigfoot community, which has been recently muddied with hoaxers and extortionists. So, Dr. Meldrum, being a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University, makes him a heavy hitter. And he is here today, talking about his Sasquatch field guide, which has just been printed, uh, the Falcon Project, which is an unmanned blimp that's looking for Sasquatch quietly in the woods from the air, and his thoughts and opinions are shared on Dr. Ketchum proving that Wookiees are real and that the Yeti debacle he was awkwardly a part of where he was publicly stated he felt the conference was orchestrated with publicity stunts to promote tourism in Russia. But yeah, that's towards the end. But anyways, let's get on with part one of our interview with our esteemed guest, Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum. Hello. Hello, Dr. Meldrum. Yes. This is Richter Riolo, your favorite artist. Great. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you for doing this. I have uh, Tammy and Steve Elkhorn joining us shortly. Okay. Okay, so Tammy just popped in. Tammy is now. Say hello to the doctor, Tammy. Hi, Dr. Meldrum. Hi, Tammy. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Look forward to this. <laughs> Good. We also have Steve Elkhorn. Say hi, Steve. Hey, Dr. Melder. How are you doing? Very good, thanks. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this little interview. We are so excited to have you on to talk about your new field guide that you've just recently published. Mm -hmm. And also the Falcon um, Project as well. Yes. Yeah. And all the recent rumblings that's been going on in the Bigfoot community. I gotta say though, I think as a Bigfoot enthusiast and commentator, it, this has been the craziest past yeah. six months in Bigfooting. It, it has. And, it, and, and there's been an unfortunate uh, level of distraction, I think, more than anything. So it. Um, I hope we we clear. I hope we clear out of this uh, fog of confusion here real quickly and are able to move on, move on to uh, bigger and better things. Well, unfortunately, as you know, with human nature, there's going to be all different kinds of things happening. We have Wookiees now in the mix, and being a huge yeah. Star Wars fan that I am, I can't be more excited because out of anything that the Dr. Ketchum Circus has proven is that Star Wars is real. <laughs> <laughs> so, in all, in all seriousness... Quite an odd development. Yeah. You know, thank God for ketchup. Oh my God, ketchup at Star Wars. I mean, who cares about Bigfoot? Star Wars is real. All right. All right, let's get serious now. Let's talk about your um, Bigfoot field guide. Um, what was your motivation for uh, creating this? Did you want to create like an updated field guide? Because I know there was that one that came out years ago from someone else. Well, there was one, yes. There was one that was published through the International Society of Cryptozoology back in the days of Richard Greenwell, and it was a little a little pamphlet, and it had some, some good information. It wasn't 
really visual, um, uh, you know, not, not intended really to be something that was taken out of the field. I was actually approached by a company that produces this kind of heavily laminated, you know, waterproof field guides that are, that are intended to be taken out in the elements. And, and uh, uh, they have quite a, quite a broad listing. I mean, they started off with marine guides and, and went to all different types of natural history guides. And, and uh, the publisher there, Jim Morehouse, uh, uh, approached me about the, of what I thought about the prospects of, the, of a field guide for Sasquatch. They had, they had sort of floated the idea with some of their clients and, and had gotten a very, not surprisingly, a very positive, very enthusiastic response. And, you know, the more I thought about it, I thought that there certainly was a need, there was a niche. Because one of the things that I'm often bemoaning is the fact that, um, that so much of the enthusiasm of, of, um, of Bigfoot investigators gets sort of misdirected, gets uh, you know, well-intentioned, but, but not uh, very thoughtfully applied to the collection and preservation and discrimination of data. And so I thought, hey, here's a, here's a chance to, uh, to put something together on a small scale. I mean, obviously it's, <coughs> it's intended, <coughs> pardon me, it's still getting over this cold. It's intended to be uh, portable, and so it's uh, it's on a small format, about the size of a road map that folds out to about six six panels, six double-sided panels. And so they're little little vignettes that address the different types of evidence that might be encountered in the field, and and and, and also uh, field marks that would be used to identify. You know, I was always inspired by Dr. Bindernagel's uh, uh, aspirations that that field guide depict Sasquatch. Um, and his, uh, his figure that he, he features so prominently in the book, which we kind of borrowed the spirit of, contrasting the, the silhouette or the outline of a, of a Sasquatch with a bear, we added a little hiker with his uh, you know, cap and rucksack on there uh, as well. Uh, and, and you know, what are the distinguishing features? How would you how would you determine whether that flash of fur that you saw in the trees was really a Sasquatch and not a bear or a moose or an elk? Right. So it was fun. I had a good time putting it together. And, uh, Jim was uh, really very thoughtful and, and very proactive in making suggestions and, and uh, contributing ideas about what would be uh, good material. You know, we tried to kind of bring the focus, not let the focus get too broad, but keep it related directly to the collection of, of field data and the discrimination of field data with a little bit of background information about that. So I, I really think it will be popular and it will be a fun and interesting tool. Well, you know, like I, like I said, if, if, uh, you know, if, if the search for Sasquatch gets people out in the woods and gets them uh, interested and uh, in, uh, inquiring about uh, various aspects of natural history, that's great. I mean, I think well, I wanted to say that I was talking with Tammy a few months ago. We had a contest in Team Taser. It was a beard contest. And um, one of the grand prizes was your uh, Sasquatch or Legend Meets Science book. Oh, uh -huh. And also there are other books that Lupe Mendoza and myself uh, purchased to give to everybody that participated in the contest. So they all got something. And one of the books Good. was uh, the older field guide. And I remember looking at it with Tammy and thinking, Gosh, wouldn't it be great to have a new one that was made? And it's almost as if you connected with that cosmic vibe and now came out with this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and the hope is, we, I've been in some discussions with our publisher for Sasquatch Religion Meets Science uh, because I've been kind of torn. I mean, we're to the point, we, we ran to the end of, of the last printing. So there's about 13,000 13, well, not now. They actually went ahead without uh, my knowledge and, and did an additional print. So there's about there's now about fifteen thousand copies in print. But I, I had hoped that at the end of that last printing, before you know, like catch them before they went ahead and did another printing, that we could discuss the possibility of doing a a revised, expanded second edition. And because you know, ten years, almost ten years, mm -hmm. has gone by. Well, not quite six, six seven years has gone by. Uh, but, but a lot has happened in those six or seven years, and uh, 
I, I thought that it would be it would be uh, you know, very useful, beneficial to kind of follow those threads along uh, in each of those chapters and add you know one or two elements that have uh, well in a way aren't aren't you kind of glad that you didn't because can you but everything that's happened now in light of the Ketchum Circus, we now know, we now have answers as to what's come out, what her report is, how it was published, and um, there was no peer review, things like that. So if you had expanded on your uh, Sasquatch for Legend Meets Science, you could have easily had alluded to, oh, there's an ongoing DNA study by Dr. Ketchum, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then could you imagine yeah. your yeah. face palm follow-up? Oh gosh, publishers! Oh, we have to make a third publishing now. We need to make an addendum. Oh my God! You know. Okay, so back onto your. Um, yeah, that, that could have been an unfortunate situation. Oh. Say okay, that I've had my reservation from the get-go uh, concerning that project. And, oh. uh, okay, now it's gone even. from Wookies to giant lemurs. All right. So, anyways, back on your little pamphlet. Um, our yeah. friend, our friend, the Reverend Jeff, uh, asks. With regards to the new Bigfoot field guide you just released, what is the basic information and what type of researcher is it created for? Well, I think it'll, it'll have uh, elements that will appeal to uh, all levels of, of experience, uh, both the, the quote-unquote newbie as well as, as uh, individuals who've been out there uh, for a long time. I mean, they're there are, are very fundamental issues uh, and, and, and very, some very technical issues of, of discriminating uh, morphology uh, of the foot as it relates to and is expressed in the footprint of, uh, of bears versus, uh, versus, versus Sasquatch. I mean, I get, I mean, I'm, I'm often impressed by the, the, the level of awareness of, of a lot of um, big enthusiasts who chime in on a Facebook page. I mean, that's one of the things that I've tried to do with my Facebook page is also use that as a platform to try to educate by like throwing up examples. Now, what do you think about this? Sometimes people misinterpret it. They think that I'm asking because I don't know. And I'm asking, no, I'm not. I'm asking, in some instances, that may be the case that there's some real odd thing and I'm saying, hey, this is, I'm scratching my head, what does this mean? But in most cases, I'm throwing it up to get responses from from the, uh, the followers, from the friends, and see if they are aware of, of how one would go about discriminating these kinds of things and eliminating the common wildlife. And, uh, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm repeatedly impressed that a lot of people are uh, well informed, but there's a lot of people out there. I mean, if you were, you know, had any idea of the volume of the stream of, of submissions, if you will, that I receive on a daily basis, oftentimes, of footprints and photographs and this and that. Uh, the, uh, the the lack of, of familiarity with wildlife time amongst the average Bigfoot enthusiast group is uh, is you know sometimes a bit appalling. <laughs> I, you know, I, I keep telling people in this day and age, with the tremendous resources that are available on the internet, you know, everybody that's doing this should be an expert in in uh, track analysis at least those those most commonly misidentified large mammals like bears right you should know barefoot inside and out uh, because i get re repeatedly get uh, examples of bare footprints that are sent um, as possible examples of sasquatch track well david matt dorf uh had a few questions and tammy's got mm -hmm. them as well, so let's uh, move this on to the other questions from David here. Okay, Tammy. Okay, Dr. Meldrum, the question is: You spoke of the flood of uh, information, or um, uh, I'm having trouble stuttering here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the question is: Let's just get right to the question. How many Bigfoot-related emails and a uh, stream of and volume of information do you get a week, and how many do you immediately dismiss? Well, <clears throat> um, I guess if you take some of the email traffic has been replaced by uh, Facebook messaging, but I mean on a daily basis, I haven't thought about it on a weekly basis. I mean I get literally dozens on a daily basis. I I usually come in in the morning and you know I have to sit through and 
I have my regular business, university business, that occupies my attention, but there's there's always a good dozen or so um, submissions from uh, from various people. Uh, the, I have to say, unfortunately, that the majority of stuff that gets posted or that gets emailed to me uh, can be immediately dismissed. There are, um, you know, there's just a propensity of people to get excited about, I don't necessarily like the term, but kind of description, uh, blog squatches. I, I'm just dismayed sometimes by the, by the uh, uh, some individuals who see uh, a Sasquatch in every shadow looking, in every shadow, in every nook and cranny, uh, and even high up in the tops of the trees. There was one, there was one uh, bevy of, of uh, photographs that were posted here just within the last several days, and and uh, every shadow in up in this pine tree was a Sasquatch. I mean, there were half a dozen Sasquatches in one tree. Well, don't forget, you there's know, also I, beavers, I, too. I have to ask myself, if, you know, is this person uh, sincere, or are they just uh, just trying to jerk someone's chain and uh, make well, a mockery of it? Well, do you also recall when the, the porcupine, remember when that porcupine was in the tree? And oh, that's a squash. There, uh, remember that time there was that photo of a blob squash, and it was actually a porcupine that was up in a tree. Oh, that's oh, a Bigfoot yeah, baby. And it's just like, oh, that. gosh. That would be a common one. I mean, it's the funniest thing. I, I was at a conference one time and got pulled aside by a woman who was all excited about her pictures. And she, she starts laying out these pictures uh, on the tabletop. And, uh, you know, there was this funny looking little shape that could have been a a Sasquatch, but it was only six inches tall. It was down underneath a, a, a bush in her garden. <laughs> and I said, you do realize the size? She said, oh, yeah, they come a very small size. <laughs> and then there was another one. A woman had this quite uh, intriguing photograph that looked like a face within the foliage of a tree. And I said that it was very cropped in and enlarged. And I said, well, you, you don't happen to have the original photo, do you? She said, oh, yeah, she pulled out the original photo. Well, the photo was taken through a window in her stairwell, looking out into a tree that was right against the house. And so this face was just literally floating there in the tree, probably about 15 feet off the ground, because it was up about second story. And, um, and, and she was able to, uh, uh, she was able to uh, uh, see this image there within that, uh, within that picture. Mm. It was just, you know, fun. Well, it seems like... Yeah, um, I hate to interrupt, but you know what? I, I totally spaced on something when I scheduled this, and I have a, a student at the door. Can, <laughs> is this, we're, we're recording this? Yeah, but we can, we, can, we can come right back whenever you feel like it. You're able to. So Okay. Well, just give me uh, three minutes, and I'll yeah. be right back. Okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, totally understand. Sorry. Approved!